So, like I was saying, you can define justice, as the interest of the stronger, the government, or the ruling power. Whatever they say, is, justice. But tell me Throzimachus, are the rulers of states absolutely infallible, or are they sometimes liable to a, typical Socrates, I knew you'd go there. Do you think I'd call him who is mistaken, the stronger, at the time when he is mistaken? So you'd say that, for example, a physician is a physician as long as the skill, the art of medicine doesn't fail him. Sure, now what does that have to do with this? I wish to illustrate something, that every art or skill, has an interest for which the art has to consider and provide. And that the art, or skill of ruling, is the same way. Would you say the physician is a healer of the sick, or, a maker of money? A healer of the sick? And the pilot, is he a captain of sailors or a mere sailor? A captain of sailors. Now I'd like to see if you'd agree, that every art, skill, and artist has a subject for which it has to provide. Sure, if you'd get to the point. And the interest of any art, is the, perfection, of it, this, and nothing else. What do you mean? I mean what I may illustrate negatively, by an example of the body. Suppose you were to ask me whether the body is self-sufficing or has wants. I'd say certainly the body has wants, for the body may be ill and require to be cured, and has therefore interests to which the art of medicine, ministers, and this is the origin and intention of medicine. Um, okay. And do you see that medicine, as an art form, does not consider the interest of medicine, but the interest of the body? Sure. I guess. Nor does the art of horsemanship consider the interests of the art of horsemanship, but the interests of the horse, neither do any other arts care for themselves. For they have no needs, they care only for that which is the subject of their art. But surely, Thrasymachus, the arts are the superiors and rulers of their own subjects? Um, sure. No science or art considers or enjoins the interest of the stronger or superior, but only the interest of the subject and weaker? Then, Thrasymachus, there is no one in any rule who, insofar as he is a ruler, considers or enjoins what is for his own interest, but always what is for the interest of his subjects, or suitable to his art, to that, he looks, and that alone he considers, in everything which he says and does. Socrates, has your mother not even taught you to know the shepherd from the sheep? You think the shepherd fattens or tends the sheep or oxen for their own good? And not themselves? You don't know that true rulers think of their subjects as, sheep. And that they study their own advantage day and night. Oh, no. And so entirely astray are you in your ideas about the just and unjust as not even to know that justice and the just are in reality and others good, that is to say, the interest of the ruler and stronger, and the loss of the subject and servant, and injustice the opposite, for the unjust, is lord over the truly simple and just, yeah, I leave and say, that the just, is always, the looser, in comparison with the unjust. First of all, in private contracts, wherever the unjust is the partner, you will find that, when the partnership is dissolved, the unjust man, has more, and the just, less. Secondly, in their dealings with the state, when there is an income tax, the just man will pay more and the unjust less on the same amount of income, and when there is anything to be received, the unjust man gains more. In the highest form of injustice the criminal is the happiest of men. When man, or state, conquers another, he is termed happy and blessed by all who hear of him. Mankind censure injustice, fearing that they may be the victims of it and not because. They shrink from committing it. And thus, as I have shown, Socrates, in justice, when on a sufficient scale, has more strength and freedom in mastery than justice, and, as I said, justice is the interest of the stronger, whereas injustice is a man's own profit and interest. Thrasymachus, I'm happy to see you can be passionate about this subject too. Please stay a while longer. I must say I'm still not convinced, I do not believe, in justice to be more gainful than justice, even if uncontrolled and allowed, to have, 
free play. 4. Granting that there may be an unjust man who is able to commit injustice either by fraud or force, still this does not convince me of the superior advantage of injustice. If you are not already convinced by what I have just said, what more can I do for you? Well, let's find some consistency. Yes. I think that the art of the shepherd is concerned only with the good of his subjects, the sheep, and that the ruler, could only regard the good of his flock or subjects, whereas, you, seem to think, that the rulers in states, that is to say, the true, rulers, just enjoy being in authority, think, I am sure of it. Then why in the case of lesser offices do men never take them willingly without payment? unless under the idea that they govern for the advantage not of themselves but of others? I'll add to our previous illustration, each art gives us a particular good and not merely a general one. Medicine for example, gives us health, navigation gives safety at sea. Okay. And? And they're not confused with other arts, any more than the art of the pilot is to be confused with the art of medicine if the health of a pilot happened to be improved by a sea voyage. You would not be inclined to say that navigation is the art of medicine, would you? Of course not. If a man is in good health when he receives pay you would not say that the art of payment is medicine, or that medicine is the art of receiving pay because a man takes fees. Sure, I mean, no. When someone receives payment for his work, any advantage or loss would be the use of the art of pay, not the art itself. I, guess. The art of money is something several artists or leaders may have in common. Do they receive any benefit themselves from their art unless they get paid? No, we don't. But does he therefore confer no benefit when he works for nothing? Certainly, he can be helpful. Then now, Thrasymachus, there is no longer, any doubt that neither, arts, nor governments provide for their own, interests, but, as we were before saying, they rule and provide for, the interests of their subjects who are the weaker, to their good, they attend, and not to the good of the superior, no man takes a lesser office to clean up, or any office to serve a needy state, without either being paid for the work or by believing that they are the only hope for the state and even when it's for their own interest, and when not, in order that rulers may be willing to rule, they must be paid in one of three modes of payment, money, honor, or penalty for refusing. Good men do not wish to be openly demanding payment for governing. They may be induced to serve from the fear of punishment. And this, as I imagine, is the reason why the forwardness to take office, instead of waiting to be compelled, has been deemed dishonorable. One of the worst punishments for he who refuses to rule, is to be ruled by one who is worse than himself. And the fear of this, as I conceive, induces the good man to take office, so it seems to me that ruling is by nature for the good, and the true ruler is not meant to regard his own interest, but that of his subjects, and everyone who knew this would, choose rather to receive a benefit, from another, than to have the trouble of being, a ruler. But when you say that the life of the unjust is more advantageous than that of the just, it appears to me to be of a far more serious character. You're speaking of something like perfect injustice, would you say that perfect injustice is more gainful than perfect justice? Yes, that is what I say, and I have given you my reasons. And what is your view about them? Would you call one of them virtue and the other vice? I suppose that you would call justice virtue and injustice vice? What a charming notion. I'd say the opposite. Because I affirm, injustice to be profitable and justice not. So you, would call justice vice? No, I would rather say sublime simplicity. Then would you call injustice malignity? No, I would rather say discretion. And do the unjust appear to you to be wise and good? Yes those of them who are able to be perfectly unjust, and who have the power of subduing states and nations, but perhaps you imagine me to be talking of cut purses. Even this profession, if undetected, has advantages, though they are not to be compared with those of which I was just now speaking. I do not think that I misapprehend your meaning, but still I cannot hear without amazement, 
that you class injustice with wisdom and virtue, and justice with the opposite. Certainly, that's how I class them. Now, you are on more substantial and almost unanswerable ground, for if you'd admit, as others, that injustice is vice and deformity, we could have come to an agreement. But now I see that you will call, injustice honorable and strong. So let me ask, does the just man, try to gain any advantage, over the just? Far otherwise, if he did, he would not be the simple amusing creature which he is. And would he try to go beyond, just, action? He would not. And how would he regard the attempt to gain an advantage over the unjust, would that be considered by him as just or unjust? He would think it just, and would try to gain the advantage, but he would not be able. Whether he would, or, would not be able is not to the point. My question is only whether the just man, while refusing to have more than another just man, would wish and claim to have more than the unjust? Yes, he would. And what of the unjust? Does he, claim to have more than the just man, and to do more than, what is just? Of course, for he claims to have more than all men. And the unjust man will strive and struggle to obtain more than the unjust, in order that he may have more than all? True. We may put the matter thus. The just does not desire more than his like, but more than his unlike. Whereas the unjust, desires more than both his like and his unlike. That's an okay, statement. And the unjust is good and wise, and the just is neither, good, again. And is not the unjust, like, the wise and good, and the just, unlike, them? Of course. He who is of a certain nature, is like, those, who are of a certain nature, he who is not, not, each of them, is such, as his like, is, certainly. Very good, and now to take the case of the arts. You would admit that one man is a musician and another not a musician? Um, sure. And which is wise and which is foolish? Um, the musician is wise, and he who is not, but tries to be a musician is foolish. And he is good in as far, as he is wise, and bad, in as far as he is foolish? Yes. And you would say the same sort of thing, of the physician? Sure. And do you think my excellent friend, that a musician, when he adjusts the lyre, would desire or claim to go beyond a musician, in the tightening and loosening the strings? I do not think that he would. And what would you say of the physician? In prescribing medicine, would he wish to go beyond another physician or beyond the practice of medicine? He, would not. But he would wish to go beyond the non-physician? Yes. And about knowledge and ignorance in general, see whether you think that any man who has knowledge, ever, would wish to have the choice, of saying or, doing more, than another man who has knowledge. Would he not rather say or, do the same, as his like, in the same case? I suppose. And what of the ignorant? Would he not desire to, have, more, than either the knowing or the ignorant? I dare say. And the knowing, is wise. And the wise is good? Yeah. Then the wise and good will not desire to gain more than his like? but more than his unlike and opposite? I suppose so. Whereas the bad and ignorant will desire to gain more than, both? Yes. But did we not say, Thrasymachus, that the unjust goes beyond both his like and unlike? We, did. And you also said that the just will not go beyond his like but his unlike? Yes. Then the just is like the wise and good, and the unjust, like the evil and ignorant. Um, that is the inference. And each of them is such, as his like, is. Then the just has turned out to be wise and good and the unjust evil and ignorant. Well, Thrasymachus, that matter is now settled, but were we not also saying that injustice had strength, do you remember? Yes, I remember. But do not suppose that I approve of what you are saying or have no answer, 
I'm just getting tired of this, therefore either permit me to have my say, or if you would rather keep asking things, do so, and I will answer very good, as they say to storytelling old women. I hope you can answer with your own real opinions. I will repeat the question which I asked before, in order that our examination of the relative nature of justice and injustice may be carried on regularly. A statement was made that injustice is stronger and more powerful than justice, but now justice, having been identified with wisdom and virtue, is easily shown to be stronger than injustice, if injustice is ignorance, this can no longer be questioned by anyone. But I want to view the matter in a different way. You would not deny that a state may be unjust and may be unjustly attempting to enslave other states, or may have already enslaved them and may be holding many of them in subjection? True, and I will add the best and perfectly unjust state will be most likely to do so. I know that such was your position, but what I would further consider is, whether this power which is possessed by the superior state, can exist or be exercised without justice. If you are right the new view, and justice is wisdom, then only with justice, but if I am right, then without justice. I am delighted, Thrasymachus to see you not only nodding assent and dissent, but making answers which are quite excellent. Out of civility, to, you. You are very kind, and would you have the goodness also to inform me, whether you think that a state, or an army, or a band of robbers and thieves, or any other gang of evildoers, could act at all if they injured one another? No indeed, they could not. But if they abstained from injuring one another, then they might act together better? Yes. And this is because injustice creates divisions and hatreds and fighting, and justice imparts harmony and friendship, is that not true, Thrasymachus? I agree, because I do not wish to quarrel, with you. How good of you, but I should like to know also whether, injustice, having this tendency to arouse hatred, wherever existing, among slaves or among freemen, will not make them, hate one another, and set them at variance, and render them incapable of common action? Certainly, maybe. And even if injustice, be found, in two, men, only, will they not quarrel and fight, and become enemies to one another and to the just? They will. And suppose injustice abiding in a single person, would your wisdom say that she loses or that she retains her natural power? Let us assume that she retains her power. Yet, is not the power which injustice exercises, of such a nature, that wherever she takes up her abode, whether in a city, in an army, in a family, or in any other body, that body is rendered incapable of united action by reason of sedition and distraction? And does it not become its own enemy and at variance with all that opposes it, and with the just? Yes, I guess. And is not injustice equally fatal when existing in a single person, in the first place rendering him incapable of action because he is not in unity with himself, and in the second place making him an enemy to himself and the just? Is not that true, Thrasymachus? Okay. And oh my friend, Surely the gods are just? Granted that they are. But if so, the unjust will be the enemy of the gods, and the just will be their friend? Whatever, have your fill of the argument, you seem to like to hear yourself talk. I'm simply sharing my views that the just are clearly wiser and better and abler than the unjust, and that the unjust are incapable of common action. That men who are, evil, can't work well together. For if they are perfectly, evil, they will lay hands upon one another. There must be some remnant of justice, for them to be able to combine. But whether they, just have a better and happier life than the unjust is a further question which we also propose to consider. I think that they do. Oh yeah? And for the reasons which I have given, but still I should like to examine further, for no light matter is at stake nothing less than the rule of human life. Okay, proceed. I will proceed by asking a question. Would you not say that a horse, has some end? I should. And the end, or use of a horse, 
or of anything, would be, that which could not be accomplished, or not so well accomplished, by any other thing? I do not understand. Let me explain, can you see, except with the eye? Certainly not. Or hear, except with the ear? No. These then, may be truly said to be, the ends, of these organs? Okay. But you can cut off a vine branch, with a dagger, on with a chisel, and in many other ways? Of course. And yet not so well as with a, pruning hook, made for the purpose. True. May we not say that this is the end of a pruning hook? Sure. Now, you understand my meaning, when I asked whether the end of anything, would be, that which could not be accomplished, or not so well accomplished, by any other thing. I understand. And, that to which an end is appointed, has also, an excellence. Need I ask again, whether the eye has an end? It has. And has not the eye an excellence? Yes. And the ear has an end and an excellence also? True. And the same is true of all other things. They have each of them an end and a special excellence. That is so. Well, and can the eyes, fulfill their end, if they are wanting in their own proper, excellence, and have a defect instead? How can they if they are blind, and cannot see? You mean to say, if they have lost their proper excellence, which is sight, but I have not arrived at that point yet. I would rather ask the question more generally, and only inquire, whether the things which fulfill their ends, fulfill them by their own proper excellence, and fail at fulfilling them, by their own defect. Certainly. I might say the same of the ears, when deprived of their own proper excellence they cannot fulfill their end. True. And the same observation will apply to all other things? I agree. Well, and has not the soul, an end, which nothing else can fulfill? For example, to superintend, and command, and deliberate, are not these functions proper to the soul? To no other. And is not, life, to be reckoned among the ends of the soul? Assuredly. And? Has not the soul, an excellence, also? Yes. And, can she, or can she not, fulfill her own ends, when deprived of, that excellence? She cannot. Then an evil soul, must necessarily be, an evil ruler and superintendent, and the good soul, a good ruler? Um, yes, necessarily. And we have admitted that justice is the excellence of the soul and injustice the defect of the soul? That has been admitted. Then the just soul, and the just man, will live well, and the unjust man will live ill. That is what your argument proves? And he who lives well, is blessed and happy, and he who lives ill, is the reverse of happy. Okay. Then the just is happy, and the unjust miserable? So be it. But happiness and not misery is profitable. Of course. Then, my blessed Thrasymachus, injustice can never be more profitable than justice. Ha! May this, be your entertainment, at the Bendidia festival, Socrates. For which I am indebted to you, now that you have grown gentle towards me and have left off scolding. Nevertheless, I have not been well entertained but that was my own fault and not yours. As an epicure snatches a taste of every dish which is successively brought to table, he not having allowed himself time to enjoy the one before, so have I gone from one subject to another, without having discovered what I sought at first, the nature of justice, I left that inquiry and turned away to consider whether justice is virtue and wisdom or evil and folly. And when there arose a further question, about the comparative advantages of justice and injustice, I could not refrain from passing on to that. And the result of the whole discussion has been that I know nothing at all, for I know not what justice is, 
and therefore I am not likely to know whether it is or is not a virtue, nor can I say whether the just man is happy or unhappy.